Good morning. How are you guys? Good. I'll invite everybody to stand up, please. All right, and we're going to get big here. We're going to reach for our biggest goal. I want you to stand on your tippy toes and go high. Go on your tippy toes, reach for something. It might be something that you haven't yet connected with. Uh, it might be something that you haven't connected with in a little while, but now you're reaching for it. And I want you to bend your knees. We're going to bend down, stretch a little bit, reach for the floor. And one more time, we're going to get really big. Go, go, go. One more inch. You can do it. Thank you so much. Have a seat. All right. Um, so my name is Karen. I'm from Waverly, Nova Scotia. And uh, I wanted to chat with you a little bit. I want to bring you back. I knew actually when I was eight years old that I was going to race at the Olympic Games, that I was going to compete. And I'll just bring you back in time for a moment to when I was eight years old. Uh, my first competitive experience was as a gymnast. And it was in a school gym. And I walked into that gym, and it was amazing. It was The vault was there, the balance beam was there, the floor was there, and my favorite event, the bars. And I'd gone over my routine over and over and over the night before my, uh, my, my uh, competition. And I was nervous, but I knew I wanted to compete. And gymnastics was a sport that I really excelled at. And so I walk up to the bars, I signaled the judges, and I was ready to go. And I start going through the routine, and everything's going just as I'd imagined it in my mind's eye the night before. I get to the hardest part of the routine, which is a handstand. As I kick up to my handstand, I farted. <laughs> I farted. I wanted to run out of that gym and never, ever, ever come back. That was my first competitive experience. It was horrifying. So you might sit there and think, well, if that was your first competitive experience, that wasn't a very positive first experience. And why did you stay a competitive athlete? And the reason being is because I have a dream. That dream was born when I was eight years old, and it was to compete for Canada at the Olympic Games. I didn't know at that time if it would be in whatever sport, uh, but I eventually found kayaking. And eventually, 15 years later, I made that dream a reality. So that's what I wanted to chat with you a little bit about today, is how we can empower our performance we each have the opportunity each and every day to follow a goal, to strive for something. And I have an acronym to help you along your way. I consider these to be the keys to my own uh, success to empower my performance. I hope you find the stories helpful. So the first letter D stands for determination. This story goes back to when I was 16 years old. So I would, I'd been kayaking for a few years at this point, and I thought that I, I really wanted to go to the Canada Games so I remember approaching my coach, who was my coach my whole career, and chatting to him about the possibility of going to these Canada Games. And he sat me down and explained exactly what I had to do. I had to train in the morning before school. So 6 o'clock in the morning, those cold November mornings, I remember my hands literally almost freezing to the paddle. And he told me about the, that I had to go to school during the day, obviously, and I would come home. Usually, I'd eat a box craft dinner, and I'd head back down to the canoe club in the afternoon for, for another training session. So that continued all year, and eventually in the spring, my coach thought I'd done enough work that I could go race against the other girls that were my age in the country. So I went up to Ottawa and had my first race at the national trials. I ended up coming second in that race, which propelled me onto the, this national team. I was going to the Junior World Championships over in the Czech Republic. That was where my Olympic dream was actually becoming a reality. The first time I put that Canada jersey over my head, it had a maple leaf right here, and Canada was screened on the back. It was just a plain cotton t-shirt, but it held so much significance. I felt like superwoman. I held that same feeling every time I would get dressed to race. Every race I would do, I felt like I was invincible. I could do the impossible. And I got to experience my dream, my goal. I was very, very fortunate. I'm so grateful to my parents, who put me into many, many different sports when I was a kid. And I got to live my dream and create it. So what I learned really quickly was that if you have a dream and a goal, and you do something every day, you're determined to achieve it every day, 
Oftentimes, you can surprise yourself and achieve something much greater than you ever anticipated. And that's what happened to me. I had very quick success um, based on just a little goal, just a little seed. So what did D stand for? Determination, right. R stands for role models. And role models, I believe that we are who we surround ourselves by. We become those people. So I made the choice when I was a young athlete to surround myself with athletes, tons of athletes. Um, they became, I would watch them, I would learn from them. Role models that I had growing up were actually ski racers because I was, I was determined to be a, a downhill ski racer from Nova Scotia. Karen Percy, Karen Stemmel, Karen Lee Gartner. Do you notice the trend? <laughs> we all had the same name. It was as simple as that. Um, but role models are important. They shape who we are. So become the energy that you want to be. Surround yourself with the people. Have those meaningful conversations. Read those interesting books, those blogs, things that you want to do. Do those big goals. But we have to surround ourselves and empower ourselves to do that. So role models are key. I've had the opportunity to train all over the world. I was so lucky. I've trained in Italy, in France, in Australia. I got to experience so many different cultures and the way that people were doing our sport. And what I learned was that it was just about being the best that you could be. So role models. And I would like to take the opportunity right now to just have a moment of gratitude for the role models and mentors that each and every one of us has had as be part of our lives. There are definitely people who have helped us to get right here, right now. Let's just say thank you, just silently. Role models are important. What did D stand for? Determination. R? Role models. E stands for expectations. And I'd like you to use your mind's eye and think about the tallest mountain in the world, which is what? Mount Everest. Yeah, so when I talk about expectations, I talk about goals. And I want you to think about a goal that you have for yourself, like just like we did when we stood up in the beginning. And right now, I want you to see yourself on the top of that mountain, having already achieved that goal. Whatever it is that you hold for yourself, see yourself having success and having already achieved it. Feel it with all of your senses. It's really important to do that, because once we start that process, we actually create it. We make it happen. It becomes part of our DNA. We, in, we, we start to move things forward. I'll tell you, my first Olympic experience happened 15 years after that initial seed. And it didn't happen in the spur of a moment. I had to climb that mountain. Many, many injuries, many, many experiences. But eventually I got there. And I'm telling you, the day of the Olympic final was nothing like I had pictured it. I remember waking up that morning to 90 kilometer winds that day. It was hurricane force winds. I'd waited all of those years for one minute and 40 seconds. It was surreal. We were called on and off that start line four separate times on that day. That in, in and of itself was super uh, draining. And eventually we raced at four o'clock in the afternoon. We were supposed to race at 10 a.m. We raced at four only because the Olympic flame was gonna be extinguished in two hours. We got to that start line and we, I was just, it was the most scary day of my life. We were just trying to stay upright, trying to just hold it all together. We drove our nose of our boat into the boot, the start gate, and when it was actually happening, it was hard just to stay afloat. Halfway down the race course was when I finally realized that it was actually taking place. It was happening. And I was just in this zone where we were finally driving to the line. And I crossed the line, and I was totally spent, emotionally, physically, everything. Sometimes we need to weather the storm in our lives. And on that day, I actually let the day control me. I had thought I'd failed, and I thought I'd failed for about 10 minutes. And in that time, you're circling, and you have to go right away to boat control. That's how, what it happens at the Olympic Games. 
You go to the boat control, they weigh your boat, they test your boat for substances and things like that, and then you actually are whisked away to the media zone where you have to tell your story to everyone back home. And I had to put it all together. And I thought to myself, I've let everybody down. And I thought that for a few minutes until I realized that the expectation or the climb that I had for myself could change. So on that day, I let the day control me. I was in fear. And I learned that there was so much more that I needed to experience and learn before I was going to make the next step. I made the decision right away that I was going to try and compete at the next Olympic Games. And I didn't know that it was even going to be the next Olympic Games. I got to experience an, a 20-year career in a sport that usually lasts not very long. And I was very, very lucky. But having those expectations, it's great to have the goals for ourselves, but also understand and appreciate that the goal can change. And it might change a million times. We go through struggles, challenges. We have to overcome things. But each step that we take, we learn a little bit more about ourselves. And we climb to that higher height. And we get to places we never even dreamed of. So what did D stand for again? Determination, right? R, role models. E, expectations. A stands for attitude. Attitude is one thing that we can absolutely control. And I think that's what I loved about racing was that, that I was in control. So I had a coach, and I had training partners, and I had teammates, and I had an amazing family. I have an amazing family. And they were all with me. But when I went to that start line, I was actually alone. Each of us are really, truly alone. We have a choice to seize the moment or to, or to and, we have, and we have to make things happen. We have to create things. So the, the race that I had in the next year after my first Olympic Games, I remember it was the World Championships and I had gone up to the start line and this day I'd had this conversation with myself and usually I have, you know, little things that go on and I pump myself up and things like that and I say hi to my, you know, fellow competitors and things sometimes. And this day I had a conversation and the question came up, why not me? And usually something, you know, the little guy on your shoulder that says why not. Usually he would speak or she would speak, and this day there was silence. So then again, the question came, why not me? Again, silence. And again, why not me? It, be, it was a switch for me. It became all about the moment that I had done all the work. I'd done so much work. But there comes a time where you actually have to let all that work go and just trust, just be. You have to step forward into the light onto that line. That start line of life is so invigorating once you make that choice. My favorite moment is the start. In that boot, when everyone's on the line, nine boats, you're like, you can feel people breathing around you. It's like a stable of horses. And it's, on, it's so empowering. It's my favorite moment, and it's so it's filled with anticipation and power and strength and just this amazing energy. And then the boot drops. So this one race, I had this amazing start. It was unbelievable. I don't know even where it came from. I was propelled out to the front of the pack. I was right beside the Polish girl and the Hungarian girl and we were racing in Poland. I got halfway down that 200 meter race and I heard the jet engine roar of the crowd pulling me to that finish line. And I was thinking the only thing that I could. One more stroke, one more stroke, one more stroke. I had to keep it present in the moment, controlling what I could control. I think that's so important when we go through life, to come back to what we can actually control, what's in our, con what's in our power and what's not. So it became about the single strokes. That's what I knew how to do. I'd done millions and millions and millions of them. That's what I could do. And finally, I had five strokes left, three strokes left, and I shot my boat, and I was a world champion. I became a world champion. And it was the most amazing feeling to have everyone around me 
and to feel my five family members that were in the crowd out of the 60,000. I saw them right away, and it was just this amazing connection. It is all about our attitude and our approach to our situations, which determines our success. M stands for motive, momentum. Taking that first step towards whatever goal it is that you have for yourself takes a degree of bravery and momentum as opposed to motivation because we don't always have motivation. We don't always have that fire in our gut to get going and do that great work that we need to do. But what we can do is we can get out of our bed and put our two feet on the floor and start moving forward, whether it be a health-related goal or a, or a community-related goal or a work-related goal or a difficult conversation that we need to have. We can make that momentum. That is in our control. And we can move things forward. From that, we get motivation. We either get it from within ourselves or from other people around us, but it comes. It all starts with that courage of momentum. So now you have the dream, D-R-E-A-M. I consider those to be the keys to empowering your performance, whatever it is in your lives, your goals. And just remember, on this tiny little eight-year-old kid who farted in her first gymnastics competition, and guess what? I achieved my big goals. I know each and every one of you can achieve your big goals too. Go out there and do it. Make some momentum and, uh, have, and, and be amazing, as I know you can be. And by the way, everybody farts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>